Welcome to Unmuted, where we got your gaming and esports hot topics, hot tweets, and spiciest memes. I'm Lisa Dwan. And I am AJ Fry, and this is how the show is going to work. Producer Tyler puts two minutes on the board for each topic that we will present and most likely argue. And lucky for Lisa, there's a mute button here, so if I ever get annoying and I won't stop talking, like I just drone on and on and Don't on endlessly, it. there's a moment where she can just interrupt. Yeah, so you get the idea. <laughs> you get the idea. All right, shout out to Chad, because we love it when you call AJ out when he's wrong and praise me when I'm spitting the truth, so let's get right to it. Uh -huh. Let's dive right into today's top stories with some big news from Blizzard. Ooh, the Overwatch developer announced yesterday that its annual convention celebrating its games will be returning in 2019. BlizzCon 2019 will take place in its usual spot at the Anaheim Convention Center from November 1st to the 2nd. BlizzCon is usually filled with big announcements for Blizzard's games, plenty of fan events, and esports competitions like the Overwatch World Cup. All right, AJ, do you think that this event is made for an annual kind of sense? Like, it should come back every single year? Or is that too much? I actually think that it's it's good at, at once a year. Yeah. Um, I mean, they have so many different properties that they're in charge of. Hearthstone, um, sure. you got Overwatch, you got StarCraft, Warcraft, they're redoing Warcraft 3. You didn't mention Heroes of the Storm. I didn't mention Heroes of the Storm. I forgot about that one. As it's did okay, everyone you're not else. the only one. Exactly. <laughs> but I saved Diablo for last because they're making a Diablo mobile game, and I'm sure everyone's going to want updates on that one again at the next BlizzCon. AJ, I don't That's, think anyone wants updates on that one. That's Other unlike. than being that it's canceled. Yeah. I think that's the only update people would want. But mobile gaming's a thing. What? You don't have phones? <laughs> Crickets. So. Crickets. That's true. Okay, listen. <laughs> I, I'm i actually not against mobile gaming. I know a lot of people like to, sh you know, poop on it. But I think, on the other hand, it is the future. I think it is going there. So. Well, I mean, all of our, like, consoles are getting smaller and smaller, and the Switch is now a mobile device. I, yeah. I think we'll, yeah. That's true. It'll be interesting to see what the but PS5 is... is like if it's got some sort of compatibility like the Switch. Uh, but true. we're going off topic yeah, yeah, yeah. From, from Blizzard and their annual events. Is BlizzCon not just a big circle jerk for itself? It totally is, oh, but <laughs> name another company of that scale in gaming. I mean, the only one I can think of would maybe be Valve, and Valve really hasn't done anything interesting no. as of late, but like, there's no other company out there with that many games that are just made by one company. Right, there's, right. you know, EA and like, you know, Ubisoft, I guess Ubisoft, Ubisoft could have an annual convention. They've got a, quite a few games and they've got their annual titles as well that they That's do, true. like Watch Dogs That's and true. Assassin's Creed and so mm. many That'd be sick, ones. an event like that? Yeah, but Ubisoft just has amazing parties at E3, so there's that too. Speaking but. of. Yeah. Well, we'll see how the BlizzCon this year works out. Yeah, it would be great if they could invite us yeah. so that we could Guys, go we... and then we would have a very different perspective on BlizzCon. But now, Convert us. Let's, uh, are we, are, how are we on time? Can we move on to Rainbow yeah, Six? Do it. Let's All do right, it. in Rainbow Six Siege, Ubisoft has launched a new bug hunting program that rewards players for finding and reporting bugs in game by using the R6 Fix website. Great name. Uh, players can report bugs that they find, and if Ubisoft's QA team can replicate it, then they'll get a cute chibi charm <laughs> as a reward. Ubisoft plans to put more rewards into the program in the future. So, of course, this uh, is the question. Should players be taking on the role of bug hunters, or is that really more QA's responsibility? And wasn't there an era where, like, games would come out and there just wouldn't really be any bugs? I remember that time. I was about this tall, but... So about the same. Yeah. Us now. Yeah. <laughs> whoa, whoa, no hike shaming here. No hike shaming here. Uh, that's interesting. I think now, nowadays with the pressure of so many games coming out at once, yeah. so many free-to-play games coming out at once, there's a pressure for developers to consistently put out new games and more content, right? And it's also, so, it's also the platforms. It used to be when yeah. we would get those games, we'd be like, did you get it for Genesis or <laughs> SNES? Or the N64 or the so PlayStation? And now it's which you know, version of the game do you have downloaded? Which platform are you playing it on? What's your hardware settings? on different, even configurations. They just announced the uh, digital-only version of the Xbox One X. Like, so there's so many different hardwares out there. Is there no ability to patch for these games? Like, they're consistently fixing as well, uh, we go, right? that's the thing, yeah. So that's why you need to have your, I mean, your player base is constantly bug hunting anyway. It's now they're just True. adding in this ability to hunt the bugs and reward players who discover them, but they've also got to be replicatable so yeah. that you're not just, like, submitting some weird Photoshopped... <laughs> glitch screen that you made. True. I want a chibi. True, true. So. Um, I think this is actually a great idea because the bring, this brings the community together, right? You know what? There's always going to be bugs, bugs that people miss, like the company yeah. misses. So the fact that they're getting help from other people, the community, it's just the smart way to do it. What I have an issue with is that the reward is a chibi charm? What the 
You guys, loosen the purse a little. What kind of prize is It should is be that? a Jimmy Charm with like a bunch of money cool. for your store. Like, yeah, if it's yeah. the Ubisoft store, you know. They're paying their QA analysts, play. I mean, their analysts, like probably hundreds of thousands of dollars, and you're giving people a Chibi Charm? Yeah. I forgot which eSports or which company did this, but before we had another story where they were rewarding people with money, like actual thousands of dollars if you find a bug. If you guys remember, thousands right in chat, of dollars they were for rewarding people. Yes. I, wow. Yeah, so I think they need to step up here, all right? Moving over, the business side of video games, Epic Games CEO said that he would end exclusivity deals for the Epic Games Store on one condition. Steam would have to offer developers an 88 to 12 revenue sharing split. In fact, Sweeney said that Epic would consider putting its own games on Steam if that were to happen. AJ, uh, do you think this is genuine? What do you... What do you think about that split, too? I, I think maybe it is genuine, and I think as the world changes, as more companies figure out how to d deliver what Steam ultimately, you know, innovated with, with the introduction of Steam for the, you know, PC marketplace, yeah. you got to move in this direction. This is an interesting product that we're pushing, especially when you don't have overhead of, like, traditional, you know, brick-and-mortar stores where you're just, everything's digital now. Yeah. You've got to give a lot more of that money to the people who actually work on the content that's being bought when all you're ultimately providing is just the little transaction services. Middleman. Yeah, so I, I think he's absolutely right. 88 to 12 percent, so 12 percent goes to Steam and 88 percent goes to the developer. I don't, I don't think that's unreasonable at all. Do you think all. these developers really need these kind of stores? Like, what's really, what's really their benefit? to do it. Like, people will go so, to the Epic Store or buy the game itself directly, right? But the benefit is is discovery, right? Oh. Like, you're on Steam and you open Steam to play the game that you always play, but then Steam has that graphic there and it's for the new game and it's got the little advertisement and you're like, oh, that's kind of intriguing. So it's, it's like going to the store. Yes, when we launch Steam, you're not launching it to necessarily go buy something, but you might you know, just like going up to the cash. Oh, what's this little knickknack there? I'm if, guilty I think, yeah. of buying random stuff near the cashier all the time. Especially so during right. this, you know, summer sale and everything like that, where it's they've got the deals on. That's why it's important to have these, you know, distribution platforms. Right. And I think it's important to maintain that high percentage for the developers who put in all the work creating the stuff. 100%. You do need to, you know, obviously have some back end income to support the distribution yeah. platform, but. It's I, nice that we're agreeing on something. I know, like actually, that. no, I really agree that you got to reward these, you know, developers, of course, but or you can do what Respawn did and just paid a bunch of influencers to come up <laughs> to your game because that seems to be the new thing everyone's doing, That's... you know, and that worked for Apex. So maybe this yeah. is a new way of marketing that Fortnite or Epic or any other company needs to get on. Uh -huh. Just saying. Well, speaking of more marketing, our final story of the day, the Dallas Fuel, the Overwatch team, has gotten a brand new sponsor for this weekend's Homestead series, and that sponsor is Bud Light. The series has actually been renamed to the Bud Light Homestead Weekend as a result of the sponsorship. Fans who attend the event can go to a Bud Light bar and see the Bud Night in person, and viewers can see the beer advertised on the official Overwatch League stream. So what do you think of the Bud Light sponsorship here? Uh, Lisa, is it a good fit for Overwatch League? Because I thought their official refreshment was Coca-Cola. I'd rather talk about <laughs> what you're doing with your voice right now. What is, what's happening? I'm contractually what obligated to say Bud Light. Really? Can we get you to say, like, you know, unmuted in a certain way? Unmuted. That's the same voice. you got to mix it up. I, AJ! I've got my one announcer radio guy voice, <laughs> All and that's right. it. Well, this is actually kind of cool, because we don't see a lot of alcohol sponsorships in esports, but isn't this kind of also then limiting, like, the age group? You know, like, if they sponsor a certain event, then people under the drinking age can't go? Or, like, what's the deal there? I don't know. Right? Hey, little Timmy, are you ready for a refreshing crisp <laughs> Pilsner from Bud Light? Uh, Sold! <laughs> that was great. I, I think it's good that we've got these, you know, because alcohol companies, obviously, it's a big business. They've got the money to throw around. They yeah. should be in the esports scene. Uh, um, but Bud Light? Yeah, but Bud Light. It's just too bad that it's uh, such a crappy beer that's sponsored. I was going to say it, but I was scared to say it. I <laughs> no, was Bud like, Light is really terrible. Bud Light? Bud Light is just, oh. It's basically oh. water, so maybe in that case, kids can drink it. Well, beer is basically water. Well, okay, There's a few well. other ingredients. But yeah, Bud Light is just, no, it's like water tastes better than Bud Light. I would, if, if option A or B, it's B. No matter what B is compared to Bud Light. Sorry, that's just being honest. All right, now it's time to see what uh, streamers are up to and clip it. Our first clip comes from Method Josh, who's just preaching the tough truths of trying to exercise and work out. What are you gonna do about your arms? Oh, the fact that I have skinny noodle arms? Probably nothing. I'm probably gonna think, wow, I should really work out and never actually do it and continue to languish in mediocrity for the entire of my life.
until I look back and I regret everything and I realize it's far too late and this was it and this is all I'll ever be. Mm, so real. Story of my life. Although it's not That's entirely not true. true. Both Lisa and I have been going to the gym a bit recently. You've been going more. Uh, if anyone noticed yesterday, I tweeted out that I skipped the gym to stream and watch Squad. So mm. priorities, guys. Okay, listen. Yeah. Listen. I, I've had a friend visiting. I had to do my taxes. But you went a bunch to the gym. No, I haven't been to the gym in a week. It's my first week. I've been pretty consistent <laughs> for like two months. But then, I know. But then I, I've been a week off. But I'm gonna go hard for May. You know, because having a fit body, fit mind, then you can do all your gaming better. You need to, yeah, and advance out of diamond, right? Yeah, exactly. Right, you know, Overwatch? I'm still sustaining you, Diamond. Still diamond. I'm still sustaining. Must be all that gym workout that Exactly, yeah, it's you. the new healthy me, healthy gym, gym, attitude. So Thanks. See, guys, gamers do work out, kind of. <laughs> all right, our next clip is from Andy, Mo I'm going to mess up this last Milanakis. name, Milanakis, who caught Hube Sama getting upset that someone was filming him. Did you say yes? From who? You can't sleep? Yeah, for us, for all of us. I feel like you're the only one that has the issue. What? I feel like you're the only one that has the issue. See this? Whoa! Whoa, whoa! You can see that too! Whoa, chill, 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 chill. What are you talking about, dude? God, spicy, spicy reaction mm. there. All right, AJ, how do you feel about streamers, you know, streaming in real life and not getting people's permission around them? Was Hube Sama in the wrong to do that? That was kind of extreme. Uh, I mean, it's wrong to assault someone and smack a phone out of someone's hand, obviously, but it does raise an interesting question as we're seeing more and more people doing this live yeah. streaming in person. I've done this a few times walking smack down the street. Smack cameras go, out of no, hands? <laughs> go, like going live on Instagram. I haven't figured out how to go live on Twitch yet, but I'm working on it. Um, but yeah, if we start seeing more and more of this, I, I think it is invasive. I think people, like you want to go outside and enjoy yourself, not necessarily appear online broadcast somewhere and for people who yeah. might have a little bit of notoriety that's another thing as well like okay, if you're okay sure but the way he reacted was ridiculous agreed right agreed like, 100 how about a little hey buddy can you put that camera away i don't want to be filmed right now that was yeah. just honestly that's like a cry for help on his just part i don't know what's wrong with him pause on the street and let them walk past you turn your back yeah. but uh, my concern is that are we going to eventually reach a world where the camera where streaming your life just becomes so normal that you really have no way of remaining private in your daily ongoings? Is there no way that you can escape the all-seeing eye of the internet? Well, there's we're heading black there. Mirror. Yeah, well, the thing is that, listen, I'm honestly, maybe this is a millennial thing, where I just kind of assume that nothing is private. And so when you're mm. also out in public, it's kind of like, that's kind of free game. Obviously, don't get up in my face. Don't like be like evasive in that way. But if you're, right. if I'm in the background or something, whatever, that's just the way it is, you know? You have a right to be in public and do your own thing. I have a right, right. to, I can leave if I don't like it, but well, it's just kind of the way it is. Where will I politely excuse myself to go fart? If everywhere is on stream, you need like a fart zone somewhere. You need a- mute like, it. Eh? Uh -oh. <laughs> Excuse me, could you mute your stream? I need to fart. Well, maybe you control your bowels, all right? <laughs> Moving on, it's time to see what the pros have been sharing on social media with profound thoughts. The first post comes from IGN's executive editor of reviews, Dan Stapleton. He says, for those wondering, the reason IGN Italy, IGN Spain, IGN Japan, etc., sometimes give games higher or lower scores than we do is that their reviews are written by completely different human beings. Um, hello? Hello? Um, <laughs> is it kind of silly that he had to take to Twitter to say something like that? No. Um, oh, man. I, I've been doing this talking on camera for years now, and I mean, overall, people are pretty smart. People get things, but it, it's not, not that uncommon that you have to yeah. go and say stuff that you believe should be Common. incredibly obvious to everyone. Like when certain like TV shows get canceled, working for a TV company for so long, so many people, why did this show get canceled? I can't believe you canceled the show. The answer is overwhelmingly, not enough people were watching yeah. to make it worth making anymore for the amount of money that it was costing to get made. And yeah. people are still all the time, why did you cancel it? I can't believe you canceled my favorite show. Oh, Sorry, that's just oh, a personal rant a... for me. But yeah, like of course, these websites are gonna have different writers. They're in different countries, writing in different languages for different markets. 
Yeah, it makes sense. The whole concept of reviews too, you know it's like an opinion based yeah. thing, guys. So like obviously that one person's gonna like something more than the other. There's no universal objective review. Yeah. So hello, guys. Yeah, let, it's okay for it to be different in exactly. different countries. Let IGN have their diversified so silly. reviewers. All right, so next silly. up, Alex Jabaley, the president and CEO of CEO Gaming, who you may know as the Jabated emote that you're welcome to spam right now in <laughs> chat if you'd like. He tweets. If anyone on my timeline spreads the leaked endgame footage and is registered for CEO 2019, your registration will be refunded and name placed on a forever banned list. Thank you for your cooperation. <gasps> Abusive power! You know, we should believe him unless this is a debate right here, but I think the seriousness surrounding this <laughs> film, I'm kind of taking him at face value. Yeah, no, like this Don't spoil endgame. is the biggest thing of this millennial. Okay, maybe that's yeah. a little exaggeration. But the point is, this is like Most hype 10 movie years in the making? Of the past, what, 20 years? That's what I'm saying. So people are taking it seriously. You don't yeah. mess with this. Like, I think if Game of Thrones is big, this is bigger. At least on par. At least uh, really? on par. Oh, okay. I don't know. I don't what know. are the numbers of like? I, I, probably Marvel's bigger. bigger. Come on. I, all right. Marvel's bigger all over the world, definitely. Yeah, 100%. So it's kind of funny, though, that he's like, I will ban you from this event if you spoil. Uh, or why don't, why don't you just not look at social media? Though that might be impossible at this day and age, too. I feel like banning is even kind of a, a kind of boring um, punishment, knowing what happens at his events. Like, he could have come up with something a little bit more fun, mm. I think, as a possible punishment. But then you don't want to incentivize people you know, actually spoiling it in order to be a part of whatever fun punishment that he would have in mind. And hey, hey, just stop talking. You went off too long on that one. Anyways, moving on. Our last profound thought comes from CSGO Pro CLG Die, calling out another pro for something perhaps someone in chat could be found guilty of. Good morning to everyone, but at Goose Breeder, she still has her Christmas tree up. Goose Breeder! It's, oh, it's gonna be May. It's, it's, gonna, it's gonna be May. Justin Timberlake, what's that? If you know, you know. Uh, what, what What do you think about, you know, Christmas trees still up in May? We, we, Are we judging? Uh, yeah, I have our Christmas trees down. You know, I'm gonna throw someone else that we both know under the bus here. Morgan Hoffman, who has appeared on, uh, on the show before here, often has her Christmas tree up until around this time as well. She Why? Because she loves Christmas so much. But don't you love it more because it's once in a year? You know what I mean? Yeah, so you Morgan. gotta keep that time special. You don't gotta leave your tree up this long. I think I think she got it down by February, but Funny. still. We have someone here also, like Camille. She's a oh, crazy really? Christmas lover. Right. A month before Christmas begins, she's already singing songs, and you know how Camille likes to sing. Um, yeah. But the point is, you know what? I'm not gonna lie, I'm the kind of person that's so lazy, I don't mind leaving my Christmas tree up all year round. Why? We're just gonna have to take another week to put it up again. Just It's a cute decoration. Just to move on, uh, because it's time to get to some crowd control. This is where we showcase some of the greater Simply Dank things the community has been making. Uh, how dank you wonder? Well, his first post came to us from Quick Underscore Iron, who was questioning why he was banned from Rocket League. Uh, there you go. The uh, reason that uh, you were banned is uh, something offensive in your chat log. Ooh, that was lit, just like Notre Dame. <laughs> you nervous laughter. <laughs> no, I, I don't think that joke is terrible. Look, as, as tragic as it was, no one got hurt. There are certainly worse things than just uh, an ancient building uh, partially burning down. It's salvageable. And a whole bunch of billionaires were just there like, goes hey, our viewers from France. We can. Nice yeah. knowing you guys. <laughs> Thanks, <laughs> They're AJ. probably feeling much the same way. I mean, yeah, it's tragic, but like, it's just a joke. It's no one got hurt. No, I actually There are real tragedies that deserve far more attention than not. I 100% agree. I think, obviously, some people were sensitive about it, but it's like a dank joke. Should he really have been banned, though? Like, no. that's kind of a little ridiculous. Said it, it must have been a temporary ban. It, it was a one day like ban, I believe. Well, that's even a bit much for just a joke that didn't include any profanity, didn't put down yeah. anyone. People I'm sure that. I, I mean, if we all write a heartfelt apology to the building, I'm sure it will forgive us. Once it rebuilds itself. All right, <laughs> often when we're playing video games, we have to suspend logic or even certain facts about reality like game physics or healing as YouTuber Sven Johnson pointed out.
<laughs> Can we give like that was just Pog for the acting, right? Yeah, Poggers, yeah. major Poggers. Well played, right um, there. Um, that is a really good point, though. Healing in games is pretty ridiculous. Is there anything else you can think of maybe games do that doesn't really make sense when you think about well, it? Well, I mean, forget even healing. Just, like, watching the Mortal Kombat 11 gameplay <laughs> as of late. You know, you, like, rip the guy's face off mid-fight, puncture his heart. The best one is when you kick that guy in the crotch and his spine and his, like, head comes out at the top. Well, like... there's, there's the fatalities that end the match, but even those, like, fighting oh, moments yeah, where you're just like, you couldn't come back from that. There's no way. And there's no moment of, hold on a second, let me wrap a bandage around my, you know, fractured arm here. There's Bullet just, holes. Yeah. Yeah, they just continue on fighting. So yeah. yeah, video game logic is just makes no sense. But the good thing about video games is that it is a piece of art, so we have to suspend our disbelief. Yeah. And so, or well, and then there are games that like I think with Mortal Kombat it's different because it's obviously supernatural. There's like mm. a supernatural element. But when there's games that are supposed to reflect reality, you know, mm. there's that one game where it's like just a volleyball game where the girls are just like naked, but then their boobs are like this. You know what, what I'm talking about? I forgot the name of it. What's this game? you got to tell AJ, me more about this. We'll, we'll talk about it later. Let's move on. Uh, I know we did uh, briefly mention it earlier, but I really can't contain myself. Okay. Avengers Endgame, it is almost here. When are you watching it? Okay, I booked it for a week from now, so I'm <gasps> waiting a whole week to oh watch my the goodness. damn movie. Uh, I don't know if I'll survive. I'm going as soon as I'm done here. Uh, <laughs> the movie is, of course, uh, the biggest thing that everyone is talking about, and uh, to bring it back to gaming, uh, Socks for One made this a very cool crossover uh, featuring Apex Legends and Marvel. That was pretty epic. I thought that was <laughs> well done. I especially appreciated seeing uh, Lifeline with the uh, alt charge, alt accelerant there, which my <laughs> friends and I, whenever we play on the Lifeline main, they just feed me all the alt charge constantly. Shout out to Velvet and Restless Jester if you're watching out there. Wow, okay. We also uh, saw big names. Ninja was in there, Keemstar yep. was in there. So yep. that was a really sick video, but of course, I want to know. This is a really cool thought experiment that we, we can all do in chat too. Yeah. So if we had to make eSports part of the Avengers, so like and design, oh, okay. designate an eSports to an Avenger character, mm. who would be what? Did I say that right? Yeah. I think so. So who, who are you thinking? So let's, like the first one that came to my mind yeah. is, let's take Iron Man, okay? So Iron Man is known for having a lot of money. Yeah. But he's kind of like a wreck, right? He's kind yeah. of like all over the place and kind of cocky. Yeah. I thought of Fortnite right Fortnite away. For Fortnite, sure. right? So Fortnite, much money, sure. but they don't know what they're doing. Classic, organized, staple, sometimes overlooked. StarCraft II, Captain America. Oh, 100%. Like, mm. Captain America, the pillar of Aven Avengers, mm. and then we got StarCraft, which is basically the start mm. of esports, right? So that mm. one makes sense. Um, if Actually, AJ, if you were an Avenger, who would you be? Who would I be? Yeah. You're kind of pulling like a rocket look right now. The rocket Raccoon? <laughs> yeah. Just because I have the dark circles under my eyes. That's right. I wanted to be Star Lord, but now I'm a raccoon. 100% no. How do I lower this chair? Or maybe like Wolverine, but like cousin. That gag right? didn't work. That did, okay, I can't lower this, this chair. Awesome. F in chat. F in chat. All right, guys, that's it for <laughs> Unmuted. Remember that you can always hit us up on our socials. Someone type in exclamation mark socials right now. It's not going to be me in chat for all our channels. And we'll catch you next time. Bye. I am Groot.